Welcome to part one of our two-part video demonstration on how to install vCenter Heartbeat 6.6 to protect SQL Server. In part one, we cover the pre-installation configuration steps that need to be performed and installing the primary and secondary Heartbeat instances. In part two, we cover the post-installation configuration settings needed to successfully complete the installations and verifying the installations with failover testing. Before proceeding with the installation, you need to clone the SQL Server and boot up that clone. Make sure that your network connections are disconnected. Here we have logged into our primary server and begin by renaming the network adapters. We assign public and channel. Next, we go into public adapter. Set the management IP address for this server. We then disable DNS registration and NetBIOS over TCP IP. Then we go into the channel adapter and disable IPv6. Assign an IPv4 address and disable DNS registration and NetBIOS over TCP IP. Then we go out to a network share and we create a folder to store our configuration backup. Give it a relevant name, vCenter Heartbeat SQL Install. Copy its path. Copy the installation file to the local drive and we'll initiate the installation. When the installation wizard comes up, we click Next. We select this as our primary Heartbeat server, accept the license agreement, select LAN as the installation type, and specify that our secondary node is virtual. We then select our channel adapter and assign the IP for it, and assign the IP address for the secondary channel as well. This warning message says that we can't contact the secondary IP. The server is not on the network currently, so we click No. We select our public adapter and specify the shared or public IP address. Next, we enter the management IP address for our primary server and for the secondary server. Note that since the server is down, we will not be able to connect to it, so we click No here. Here we enter the primary node name and the secondary node name. Notice that only SQL Server is selected, because that's the component we have installed. We paste that path we copied earlier and click Next. Heartbeat will now go through the installation check, and we see that we have passed the checks so we can go ahead and click Next for installation. Notice that when Packet Filter is being installed, there will be an RDP disconnection if you are installing it on a remote desktop server. Next, we need to add in the DNS records for our primary instance. We name it SQL01, enter the IP address, and we check the box to create a pointer record. We also need to create the management name records. We name them SQL01-A, and SQL 01-B. Go back to the installer and click Finish and reboot the server. Now on our secondary server, we will use the console connection to install Heartbeat because our NICs are currently disconnected. We rename public and channel adapters. We edit the public NICs IPv4 settings and add a management IP address for the server. Notice that we use 192.168.110.32, which is the same as we set during the primary installation. Make sure that the shared IP address is 192.168.110.30 on this network too. We verify that DNS registration is disabled, and we also disable NetBIOS over TCP IP and move to the channel network. On our channel network, we disable IPv6 and we assign the IPv4 address that we specified during initial setup. We disable DNS registration, disable NetBIOS over TCP IP, and save the changes. Now we need to enable our NICs. We locate our shared folder and copy its path, and we begin the installation. We select that this is our secondary server, 
we paste the path we copied, and the configuration will be done without any inputs from us. Next, we select our channel adapter and our public adapter. We enter an administrator username and password on the domain that has the rights to rename computer accounts. We see that the rename is successful. We click on Finish and click on Yes to restart. We're now ready to complete the installation. Continue with Part 2, which shows how to perform the post-installation configuration.